let us now come to convex functions a function f is said to be convex if it satisfies the following two conditions first is domain of f should be a convex set and the second is for any two points x1 x2 in the domain of f it should hold that f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 is less than equal to theta times f of x1 plus 1 minus theta times f of x2 for theta between 0 and 1. So these are the two conditions which must be satisfied for a function f to be convex. Note that the first condition is actually important because if there are two x1, x2 that belong to domain of f, then domain of f really should be a convex set in order to even ensure that this point theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2, the function is defined at this point. So this point should also be in domain of f in order to even apply the second condition. So therefore domain of f has to be a convex set in order to even check the second condition. So always remember that you have to first check the first condition that domain of f is a convex set or not and then only go to the second condition. So if you are given a function like f of x equal to x 1 over x for x not equal to 0 this is clearly not convex because domain of f in this case is it is r all the points in R except 0. So if you remove a point from R and keep all the other points then that would be the set and this is not a convex set because one point is missing. You could always draw a line between any two points one point positive one point negative that line would pass through 0 and uh, by our definition of convex sets the whole line should lie inside the set. So 0 would not be inside the set therefore this is not a convex set. So this is not a convex set. So this is an example which is for non-convex function because the domain is not a convex set. So what does this condition say actually? This condition is called the zeroth order condition. So the zeroth order condition because it only depends on the function values at certain points. It does not depend on the derivative or Hessian of the function. Let's consider, let's say that this is the function. This is a convex function. These are the axes. Then let this point be x and this point be y. Then this point is f of x and this point is f of y. So what is the point theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2? For theta between uh, 0 and 1, that point would be somewhere here, right? The point theta x plus 1 minus theta y here would be somewhere here. So this would be the point theta x plus 1 minus theta y. Now what is f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y? That would be this point. So this point would be f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y. And how about the point theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of y? This point would obviously for theta between 0 and 1 would lie somewhere in between these two points, right? So this would actually lie somewhere here. So this would be this point. So this condition that we have written is stating that this, ten, this line which is joining the points x and y, joining the function at the points x and y is always above. So this line is always above this point which is on the function. So this point is f of theta x plus 1 minus theta y. So the line, this is the line this is the 
function curve so the line is always above the function curve so that is the definition of convexity for a convex function if you draw a line joining two points that line will always be above the function curve the function will be below the line okay so i hope this is a sufficient uh, intuition for how a convex function should look like and naturally this should hold for all x y in domain of f this should hold for all x y in domain of f there is also a related definition of f uh, being a concave function so f is concave if and only if minus f is convex right so we just require minus f to be convex that is the definition of concave you can also state it in a different way you can say for example that uh, domain f is a convex set and the second condition with the inequality reverse so f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 is greater than equal to theta f of x1 plus 1 minus theta f of x2 right so this is the same as the second condition we had written above with the inequality reversed so that is the key uh, difference between convex and concave that in concave we are considering the inequality reversed the first condition remains the same so we have seen the definition of convex function let's look at an example so consider the example f of x equal to norm of x let this be some arbitrary norm so is this function convex to check this all we need to do is calculate the function value at theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 we don't have to worry about the domain of f because we already know from the properties of the norm that the domain of f is the entire set rn right so that is obviously convex so we just need to check the inequality so this is given by theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 now let us apply the triangle inequality so from the triangle inequality we will get theta x1 plus 1 minus theta norm of 1 minus theta x2 so this is from the triangle inequality which all norms satisfy then uh, we can use the homogeneity property and the fact that theta is between 0 and 1 so we can use the homogeneity property and the fact that theta is between 0 and 1 to conclude that this is less than equal to actually this is equal to so this is equal to theta norm of x1 plus 1 minus theta norm of x2 and this is nothing but theta times f of x1 plus 1 minus theta times f of x2 so therefore we have established the uh, condition for convexity and therefore norm of x is a convex function let us take a slightly more complicated example let's consider the max function so f of x equal to max over max of x1 x2 till xn right or i can also write it as max over i xi note that x here is in rn so x is a vector of this form x1 x2 till xn so i am taking the components of x and i am taking the maximum of those and i am saying that that is the function value again the domain of this function is rn so i don't need to worry about the domain and uh, then let us check the definition of convexity so let there be two points let there be two points so x and z in rn and let us define y equal to theta times x plus 1 minus theta times z right or in other words y i which is the ith component of y equal to theta times x i plus 1 minus theta times z i 
now we need to show we need to show that f of theta x plus 1 minus theta z is less than equal to theta f of x plus 1 minus theta f of z right so this is what needs to be shown so let's see what this is let's calculate the right hand side so f of theta x plus 1 minus theta z is equal to max over i theta xi plus 1 minus theta zi so we need to calculate this so now what do we do with this let's say that j is the index so j is the arg max over i of theta xi plus 1 minus theta zi whenever i say arg max i mean that it is the argument i that maximizes this in other words uh, the largest component of this will be equal to theta xj plus 1 minus theta zj so in other words this is equal to theta xj plus 1 minus theta zj so j is the one that maximizes this index now what can i say about xj so let me write this statement and you can observe that this is true xj is less than equal to the maximum over i xi why is this true if i am picking the largest component that largest component of x will obviously be greater than equal to some component of x these could be equal or max of i xi could be greater right likewise zj is less than equal to max over i zi note that j is the index that maximizes theta xi plus 1 minus theta zi and not xi or zi so j is really some index which is which could be anything and xj is therefore less than equal to the maximum over i of xi so using this uh, we can write that this maximum is less than equal to maximum over i theta xi plus maximum over i 1 minus theta zi and this can be written as theta times maximum over i xi because theta is between 0 and 1 plus 1 minus theta times maximum over i zi which is basically theta times f of x plus 1 minus theta times f of z so we can see that we have been able to establish that f of theta x plus 1 minus theta z is less than equal to theta fx plus 1 minus theta fz which is basically the required condition for convexity of f and therefore f is convex.